Hello, and today we're going to look at uh, obstacles to health and wellbeing plans. So as you can see, this is um, lesson five. I've also included the other obstacles um, into one lesson um, as they're not very detailed or complicated. So we can get through all of them in one session. So um, looking at obstacles, this helps us to answer question six of the exam paper. Um, so we're looking at obstacles that the service user might experience when they're trying to follow your health improvement plan. So we're aiming to identify obstacles when implementing plans. We're looking at how the obstacles could prevent a plan from being effective and the impact that this will have on the individual. So as a starter, think back to when you tried to stick to a plan to improve an aspect of your health. Maybe you decided you wanted to have a new skincare routine, uh, you wanted to improve your diet or start exercising. So were there any obstacles that you faced when trying to stick to your plan? So as a first task, um, you need to explain why the factors shown in this diagram need to be considered when creating a health and wellbeing plan. So if you mind map these into your books or onto paper, look at how they could be obstacles when it comes to sticking to a plan. Um, so for each factor as a class, discuss each factor. For example, if a person has a very busy job, so looking at occupation, and this could stop a person from having time to exercise or stress of a job, we've got stress over there as well, uh, might stop a, pe a person being able to stop smoking or drinking. If you want to mind map this into your books and have a discussion as a class, you can pause the video. So remember, when you've been making your plan, you should have keep, uh, kept it simple and straightforward. So a person's more likely to want to follow a plan and use the support identified if they have been involved in drawing up the plan. So making it person-centered. So this will help to prevent any obstacles from occurring. So when creating a plan, you have to make sure you assess the person's current state of health. What can they do? What are they able to do? Discuss the health issue with the person to see how it affects them and the different options that you can take to tackle the issue. So when you're making a plan, you wouldn't use lots of jargon or medical terms that the person wouldn't understand. They'd find it very confusing. So we have another task now. So on the next slide, there is an example of a health and wellbeing improvement plan. So have a look and see where you might identify any obstacles. So would you be able to make any improvements to that? So I want you to write an evaluation of the plan in your books. So does it follow the KISS rule? Does it keep it simple and straightforward? Are the actions clear? Are the targets smart? So are they specific, measurable, achievable and realistic? And are they time related? Are the sources of support helpful? And are they explained well? So here is the um, action plan that we've got. So if you evaluate this in your books and see what you think. You can pause the video. So there are many different obstacles when it comes to um, having a plan. So for example, emotional or psychological obstacles. So choose one of the risks to physical health below. So diet, smoking, alcohol or inactivity. Explain how low self-esteem, lack of motivation and acceptance of current state of health can become obstacles when following a plan. So for example, somebody's diet, if they have low self-esteem, they may want to comfort eat. They may not be motivated to stick to a diet or they might not accept that their weight is a problem and their health needs improving by changing their diet. So for example, smoking, um, somebody might have a lack of motivation to stop smoking. They might not understand that smoking is causing them the ill health. They might not realize that it's affecting their blood pressure, their peak flow. Alcohol, again, people might drink if they've got low self-esteem. They might not accept that going out on the weekend and binge drinking is a problem or having a few glasses of wine every night is an issue and inactivity. People get 
obviously comfortable with their position, they might not have any motivation to exercise. They might feel too self-conscious and have low self-esteem to exercise in public. Um, they might not think that being active is a problem. They might think, well, I walk around the house all day, that's enough exercise for me, and they might not do anything to change it. So see if you can give some examples in your books of how these obstacles could be overcome. So write them down, and explain them, and explain how they might be overcome. So time constraints. Uh, so a common excuse to not stick into a plan is not having enough time. So people might feel that they already have too many commitments in their life. A good health and wellbeing plan will present solutions to an obstacle. So I want you to suggest three ways that an individual could overcome work commitments to find time to exercise. So how could this be implemented into a plan? And three ways an individual could continue to find time to exercise whilst keeping up with family commitments. So how could this be implemented in the plan? So if you pause the video, you can have the class discussion. So, so how could a person who's got a lot of work commitments find time to exercise? So it may be that they get up an hour earlier in the morning and do some exercise before work. Maybe at lunchtime they've got time to go and have a jog around the park. There might be a gym in their office block. They might, uh, instead of getting the bus or drive to work, they might walk or cycle so they could then fit it into their life. Moving on to point two, we could discuss about obviously keeping up with family commitments. If you have children, maybe you could go for a run and they could join you on their bikes. They could bike along next to you. Maybe a partner could look after children while you went out and exercised. Or maybe the whole family could exercise together. You might do things like Joe Wick's workouts in the living room. So moving on to availability of resources. So imagine you're designing a health and wellbeing plan for somebody who can't afford some of the things that they need to fulfill that plan. So for example, they might not have enough money to exercise or buy the equipment that they need. Trainers are quite expensive for running, for example. Somebody might not be able to afford those. They might not be able to afford things like gym membership or home workout equipment. So when you're creating a plan uh, to increase exercise and quit smoking, what costs could that individual come across and how could they be overcome? And when creating a plan to improve diet and lose weight, what equipment might they need and what can be done if they don't have it? So I'll let you pause the video and have a discussion. So when creating a plan to increase exercise and quit smoking, as I said before, some people might not be able to afford gym membership or exercise equipment. And when you quit smoking, some people might need things like nicotine substitutes, inhalers, um, e-cigarettes to try and help them quit smoking. And that might be quite costly. So how could that be overcome? You could try and do exercise that doesn't cost very much. For example, it's free to follow YouTube videos in your living room. If you can afford a pair of trainers, that's one outlay of cost and then obviously you can carry on exercising. There's no more additional costs if you want to go running or do a brisk walk. Um, you won't need to pay out for anything else. And looking at improving diet and losing weight, so some people might find that healthy food is too expensive. So instead they could bulk buy and freeze their meals and then defrost them when they need them. They can look at buying things that are reduced on the day um, so for example, fruit and veg, that isn't that expensive, but it obviously takes more time to prepare sometimes. Um, and when they're losing weight, they might need scales to measure their progress. So you can get weighed for free at the doctors. If you just walk in and ask a nurse, they can weigh you, and then you can monitor your weight loss. So achievable targets. Meeting targets can be encouraging, but if the targets are unachievable or unrealistic, then they can become an obstacle. So a person who feels their goals are unrealistic may already feel as though there's no point in trying and they might not stick to the plan. So complete the worksheet by reading the case study on John and assessing his situation. 
then write some realistic and unrealistic targets. Then you can discuss as a class to identify which targets are achievable and which are not. So this is the case study. It's actually about Terry. So Terry is obese. He is at least three stone overweight. He works in an office where he sits at a desk all day. So in his spare time, he smokes, drinks beer and loves eating biscuits. Often he does all three while he's watching television. His main exercise is walking to the off license on the corner of his street. Once or twice a week, he walks about 100 steps each way to his local pub for a drink with his friends who all have similar lifestyles to him. So based on his current lifestyle, what could be the possible risks to Terry's health and well-being? So I'll let you have a think about this as a class and fill in your worksheets. So um, what can we think of based on his current lifestyle? So he's obviously he's obese, he's overweight, three stone. Um, he's very inactive. He obviously, the fact that he's smoking and drinking too much beer um, and he's not getting any exercise apart from walking to the off license. Um, he doesn't have to have many people to support him because his friends are obviously all doing the same things that he is. So that's going to be tricky for him. So he could be at risk of things like heart disease, stroke and high blood pressure. So working through your worksheet, what you're now to write a list of targets to improve Terry's health and well-being. Include some that are achievable and others that are unachievable. An example has been done for you. So give your targets to a partner or discuss as a class um, to identify whether the targets are achievable or unachievable and why. So if you do this as a class, it might be easier to do it on the board or together. So lack of support can obviously be an obstacle. Um, lack of support could lead to an individual following a plan to give up. So if no one is supporting them properly, they could have difficulties with, for example, sticking to a diet, stopping smoking or cutting down alcohol. So I want you to complete the next worksheet explaining how having support can help an individual when implementing a plan. And then there's a second worksheet with scenarios where individuals have lacked support. You need to identify different ways of overcoming the obstacles. And if you can, as an extension, maybe you may have time for homework, see if you can write a short piece of writing summing up the effect it has on you when friends and family don't support you. So this is the first worksheet to fill in. So complete the table to show how sources of support can help an individual who wants to improve their health and well-being. So you may need to do a bit of research to complete the last column or last lesson we, lo we looked at sources of support then if you look at um, alternative sources the charities and voluntary organisations that could help that could fit in there as well. So for example losing weight, how might family help so they could possibly try and lose weight with you. Friends can stop inviting you out to restaurants that serve for example, Pizza Hut, maybe go to a restaurant that has healthier options. And alternative sources of support, so you could go to a dietitian to help you lose weight, you could go to a slimming club for advice and to get weighed, or you can use internet to find interesting advice and meal plans. So I'll let you fill in the other boxes on your own. You can pause the video. So completing the second part, of the worksheet. So we've got um, the obstacle, the lack of support. For example, Sue wants to lose weight, but her husband Roy likes her to serve a dessert, like sticky toffee pudding every day, putting temptation in her way. So some strategies to try and overcome the obstacle is that Roy could choose low fat toffee puddings instead. There's lots of options in the supermarket, like Slimming World options. So they taste the same, but have much less calories. Or Roy could be served fruit for pudding instead, which is much healthier for both of them. So if you have a go at filling in the other boxes, you can discuss them as a class. Do you want to pause the video now? So moving on to ability, disability and addiction. Um, so sometimes there are factors that are specific to the individual that cause potential obstacles 
when implementing health and wellbeing plans. So you might want to use revision guide page 45 if you have it with you, it might help you. So complete the worksheet explaining how ability, disability and addiction can affect individuals following plans. So here we go. So here is the factor, so ability, that could be a person with learning difficulties who might find it harder to understand, remember and learn new things. Disability, it could be physical, sensory, cognitive, intellectual or somebody might have mental ill health or chronic disease. And an addiction, obviously people might be addicted to drinking, smoking and taking drugs. So what effect might that have on an individual following a plan? So ability, um, so people with uh, learning disabilities, for example, might not understand how to follow a plan or learn new things. So they might need their plan made in an easy to understand format. They may also need a lot of support from friends, family, teachers and other staff to help them stay on track to be successful. Physical disability can prevent a person following their plan as they may not be able to access facilities if there's no wheelchair provision like ramps and adapted equipment. Visually impaired people may need information in their plan produced in braille so they can read and follow their plan easily. So addiction can be a powerful obstacle. So to find triggers that make them relax can help change their behaviour. Giving smaller plates to a compulsive eater and they won't eat as much. Nicotine substitutes to a smoker. And avoiding situations where a person would usually smoke. Going to support groups for alcoholics and drug users. So all these would benefit from counselling as well. So as a plenary, think back to the obstacle that you face at the start of the lesson. So how could you overcome this to be successful? So don't forget to write up anything that you have learned today on your revision card.